So let's go ahead and jump into our last walkthrough. Uh, for this, you will notice that a lot of these tables, metrics, buttons, all will appear very similar to our last graphic, and that's for good reason. I tried to leave a lot of the functionality very similar. Uh, the things that we updated here, we are going to draw to your attention before we jump into the code, and then that's what we're going to discuss in this last section. So auto trader, submit order buttons, all of your buttons that we covered in these last sections, updating if we want to add new metrics potentially to our, our drop down list and be able to pull that information. Um, you're going to be able to do that all in here as well. So all of this graph graphic and uh, or, or graphics, all of the dashboard functionality, it will remain the same except for two things. We have now replaced on our comparison table here at the top our uh, our strategy where we were utilizing our momentum indicators now with our EMA 25, 50, and 100 values from our EMA strategy. We also have our watch characteristics and all of the items that we create with that EMA strategy to watch for those long and potential short entries. If you're curious about this strategy, please reference back to our EMA strategy where we covered that in depth. Um, so we won't spend too much time on that, but we will show you how we're pulling this in and what was replaced. So you can you know, have more examples when it comes to potentially putting in your own strategy and utilizing a lot of the tools that we've built into this already. And then lastly, we're going to cover this graphic now. So we've taken away our close and our metrics graphics and, and kind of combined them to one, right? So the, the graphics are, you know, a little more straightforward when you put them all on top of each other as they are in here. And they've got a little more uh, to show you when looking at these in comparison. So here we've actually created a candlestick graphic. And if we zoom in, you can actually start to see these candles appear. And we've got our three EMA lines based upon our information that we're calculating and putting into our data frame. So down below, you've still got all of your data frame information that you had before. So we'll cover these changes and this update to the table. And we will um, just go ahead and wrap up then with some quick closing comments on this dashboard, how you might be able to use it and make it better, and then jump to our wrap up. All right, so go ahead, please, and open up the EMA Trading Dashboard Notebook in our course content folder. Uh, for, for me, I already had this running. Just wanted to, to start with that graphic to show what we're going to discuss, and we'll run down through those couple changes. So first, you'll notice our comp DF, or our comparison data frame table here, had a slight change. So all we did to do that, since we had already created a notebook that hosted our EMA strategy, so right here, where we created this and went over this in depth in one of our review sections, we are now going to import our EMA strategy instead of our momentum strategy. And in here, we are going to, as we iterate through the tickers like we covered in, uh, in a previous section as well, we are now going to create the tickers and utilize our EMA strategy or create the, uh, the global DF utilizing our EMA strategy versus our momentum strategy. We're going to keep our values the same here so that we can trim these down to get the last value. And then we're going to put those into our comparison data frame, which was created here as the value that we're going to pass back to create our, our data frame that sits at the top of our page and allows us to visualize and compare these stocks. You'll notice the other update we put in here is to clean up the, uh, the values that come back for the EMA strategy versus the momentum strategy. So we did also update this line where we want to uh, put our column headers and choose what order we'd like these to appear in for our visualization purposes. So that covers, again, this. It's very simplistic. Again, we created a new notebook with our new strategy. And instead of um, having to make a bunch of complex code changes, we simply copied our other notebook, added in our EMA strategy line here, changed our comparison to get our right columns. And now we're comparing our new strategy instead of having to um, create a, a bunch of complex changes to complex changes and updates to a notebook. Um, lastly, we have also updated our graphic to compare our EMA 25, 50, and 100 to our close price, uh, our open high entry lows candles from our stocks. And this will, uh, much like the, the previous, it will update as you select and drop that select that drop down and select the, the stock that you would like to analyze. Um, as we kept our 
as we kept our global format from the last section and you can also see something I probably didn't cover you know we had added SQ and showed you how to how to do that in a previous section but we did add it into this in real time so cool to see that you know as we add that you will get these values to update for SQ as well so you can see uh, square is also added in here for analysis I'm going to switch back to DraftKings here in a second because that will actually show us um, a couple potential entry points that we might have had for the day. So on this one, we are actually looking at daily data. We're not looking at uh, yearly data like we were looking at for the momentum strategy. So this is a day, um, a day's worth of information. So we're displaying the current day's worth of information. And we're doing that by changing up our analysis plots function. So within this, we are still going to pass it uh, the stock that we want to plot, except we are going to put everything onto one graphic. So within this, you know, and this is an area that you can improve, within this I go ahead and I create a new column called date and I create it and, uh, and create it based off of the date time itself so that I can do filtering. So in our data frame down here you've got a date time and it's not the easiest code wise you know with these graphics to um, filter out by the day you know somebody else that's better with uh, better with some certain python python scripts might be able to do that but what i do is i go ahead and create a new date column and then i convert it to a date and then i tell the data that i want to filter it just by today's data so i'm only looking at one day's worth now just beware if you run this on a saturday or sunday your graphics going to appear empty so don't be alarmed um, so this again it's something you might want to code in here yourself if you don't like that and you want to test things and you want to be able to go back and look at friday um, and pull multiple days worth of information uh, feel free to build that in here i just chose to to filter it by today for for ease and simplicity in the explanation. So much like our last, we're going to create a, uh, a plot figure and we're going to tell it that it, it does not have a secondary axis. Everything is going to be on the sc same scale as the stock price itself because these are um, exponential moving averages for the for the stock value itself so they're all going to be within a certain percentage of each other and the graphics will look really good with them plotted against each other and our strategy is also looking for those candlestick crossover moments and it makes it really easy to be able to look at those when they're plotted against the close price itself so to go ahead and do that we are going to add multiple lines to the graphic first as i said in plotly if you go and reference the uh, the documentation they also have candlestick graphics so you cannot uh, it's not just scatter plots you know candlestick and scatter are you know two of it seems like uh, an unlimited amount it's not unlimited but they've got a huge amount of graphics for just about any need and in this purpose we want to look at a candlestick so we want to be able to tell it that the x axis is going to be the date time so it is going to be the the um, the timeline of the data and then we can actually define the open, high, low, and close as based upon what we need to feed the graphic. And we define that as our plot stock, which we tell it up here to our plot DF is equal to our global value of our DF. So this is our global DF we're referencing, passing it which stock we want to plot, and then creating our data frame. So we're telling it we want our plot DF high, low, close, and we want our name to equal stock here. So open, sorry, open, high, low, close, and then the name of the graphic is gonna equal the plot stock. So this is where, um, right now, the name of that is DKNG for DraftKings. And then scrolling down, we're going to add three additional scatter lines to it. One each for our EMA 25, 50, and 100. So x-axis is the date, and the y-axis for each is the plot df dot our 25, 50, and 100 data sets in our, our columns there. Again, mode lines, similar to our last one, and then we're going to assign the names, again, which we see here as the names of the data sets so that we can easily identify these. We're going to add a, a characteristic change so we can add, um, you know, size the graphic, make it a little bigger for, for looking, uh, for visual purposes, changing the plot color, changing the font, and then add our range slider back in, name the y-axis, and then return our plot figure. So this is a, a small change, but meaningful change because it 
puts our graphics in a meaningful way for this strategy. So this is where it could also potentially be helpful to create these in their own notebook. You know, for this, for these purposes, they really only go with the strategy that I'm putting in this notebook. So I created the plot or the function directly in here and left these. Um, but this is something you're, you're more than welcome to play with as well and suit to your needs. Um, but you can see that this and this are our major changes for this update. And outside of that, you really don't have a whole lot. There's a couple things, you know, when you reference EMA 25 instead of um, referencing the, you know, RSI or something from the last ones when you look at uh, certain updates that may appear down in the callbacks. But, you know, for the most part, we changed very little to add in our other strategy. You know, we're still utilizing the same callbacks. Um, inside of our, our last callback for our auto trader, it's even the same thing except for the side. In this, we set up our alpaca functions to be able to take in a short and a long order. And with this, uh, this trading method, you could potentially have short order entries because we wanted to create a strategy that not only looked on the long side, but also on the short side. So if you potentially had a stock trending down for the day and you're comfortable and your brokerage allows you to enter short positions, um, you could potentially look for those short sales with this strategy. So instead of having just a strategy where you're looking for that high low breakout, you could have one similar to DraftKings here where you're looking for this to cross over that 50 EMA the reverse way and as soon as it gets back up below the 25, entering a short position. And you can see it might have been, you know, kind of lucrative here at the uh, uh, at this time, so 13.25, 13.24. So let's actually scroll down and see if that appeared as a, an entry point. So it, it actually did. So here in our uh, in our short sale column, you have a few entry points, and one of these appeared based on our analytics at 13.24. So again, UTC time. So here in the 13.24 range, which is here you can see we had a short uh, short breakout over our 50 EMA and we quickly recovered within a few ticks back above our 25 or back below our 25 I should say and our candle was headed in a downward direction and the high point closed below our 25 EMA so this is that zoomed in graphic we were looking at here. So this actually was a potential entry point where we might have wanted to short the stock. Um, and as soon as we short it, of course, we're looking for that decrease. And we can pick our entry point based upon, or our exit point, based upon our level of comfortability. So if we were looking for a dollar change, looking for 25 cent change, trying to scrape, um, this could have potentially been a good point for you. Um, so. The last thing we updated here before we move on is we took out one of our graphics. So in the last one, we had two tables that allowed us to visualize the metrics as well as the close price. In this, we simply removed the the single or the second graphic and we brought it all into one. So we left our close graphic here, made its figure the output of our plot figure, which is being determined by our analysis plot. Um, first converted here and then re-updated in our callbacks, which we covered really well in our last section, and dropping that in here. So you can see with a few simple changes, a few updates to this code itself, um, we were able to update our strategy and add in our new metrics. So our new metrics to our comparison table, our new metrics to our updates and our graphics, and keeping our, our similar functionality where we drop our data and our information here, um, update our orders and our positions, and our enable auto trader button will still work. So if you want this to look for those potential entry points for you, as we stated before, you can enter an order uh, based upon that being enabled and uh, looking for making sure stuff isn't already in your orders or your, your positions tables, but looking for those longer short orders and then placing those trades automatically. So here I've got a market order configured, but you potentially want it to be a bracket order or based upon your drop down here, this is the type of order you're comfortable with it entering. You know, if you're going to trust this thing to trade for you, you may want to configure bracket orders, which will allow you to define that high and low side, not only for 
the uh, for a long order but also for a short order so if you you know want to think of this in the inverse and protect yourself because short orders can be more risky because they can keep going up you know theoretically your loss is unlimited um, with a with a short order so bracket orders may be the way to go for for short order entries um, so again it's pretty pretty amazing that once you start getting the basics of this you can start to build out your own notebooks to you know put your strategy in there and keep all your core functionality in uh, looking at orders and examining positions um, types of trades and ways you're comfortable ordering you know looking at securities and adding those into your metrics and then lastly creating nice visualizations that you don't have to go spending a bunch of money on a trading view or something else if you want to add your own strategies in and they might be a little more complex than what the free versions allow um, so so again um, Please familiarize yourself with this before you exit the course completely. Make sure you understand, you know, all the things that we've done here, all the graphics we've added in, the couple slight subtle changes we made to add in our EMA strategy and replace that with the momentum strategy, and then build out some things that, you know, maybe fit your your trading strategy better. So one of the things I mentioned with this EMA strategy, and it's easier to see with the visualization, is rather than looking for crossover points, another popular thing is to look for when these EMAs are flipping. And this is on a daily plot, so they change a lot quicker. They can change in an instant. You know, you never know if this EMA 25 is going to go below this during the day or if it's going to keep going. And once you get back above, you'll break out. So some like to look for the flip here so where your 25 and your 50 cross back over having this be your potential entry point here instead so when all three of these get back in line to say your stock is moving in a positive direction maybe you want to enter then and in this that might have been a pretty good one as well because you went from uh, low 51 to um, almost all the way to 50 you know the high 50s at a high point here so you know don't let the scale fool you you know you don't have a lot of movement in this stock with this graphic but you potentially could have had a good clip a 20 20 30 cent clip here uh, with your with a potential entry uh, maybe even more uh, so with that we're going to go ahead and close out our last intro section again i want to say thank you to everyone uh, for bearing with me and hopefully you found some things that are helpful with this I've got one last clip to go through for closing comments and uh, ways to go forward. Again, as always, if you have any questions or you see anything that confuses you here as you're, you're going through and trying to trace through the code, please feel free to email me at any time.